Hi there, welcome to another Zoom. Not a blues one this time, or a news Zoom, if you like. We're going to go out of the United Kingdom and uh, something close to my heart after uh, I wrote a book about the, uh, the the eight World Cups I've done. Uh, and there's a chapter on Russia, of course, very much in the news these days. And uh, football in Russia has kind of disappeared from the map for the time being because of sanctions and uh, the bans from FIFA, UEFA. Uh, but nonetheless, um, it remains one of my favourite World Cups of all the ones I went to. And uh, you're looking at a picture of the stadium in Sochi where uh, Cristiano Ronaldo scored a famous free kick in a three-all draw. Spent a bit of time down there. And there's a little story attached to that picture, which we'll come to in a second. But I'm delighted to be joined by somebody who speaks great English and he's uh, uh, worked in Russian football, Ivan Korsh. Hope I got that right, Ivan. Is that right? Perfect. 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 Yeah. Um, who, uh, he, now, just tell us, you, work, you worked for, you were uh, the commerce director for um, FC Rostov. Yeah. Who play? Yeah, hi there, hi there, everyone. And yeah, obviously, I worked for uh, for many clubs in Russia for for six years, uh, including FC Rostov, including Russian national team, FC Lokomotiv, Spartak Moscow. So you can imagine that uh, obviously I worked everywhere in the club, uh, everywhere in, in in my country. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, both for uh, communications director, uh, social media manager, public relations manager, whatever. So. Been there. Yeah, that's done. that's really interesting. And you know, when I was over there, I, I you kind of I love to a lot of English British people when they go to watch their teams, their clubs abroad, and when they follow England as well, to, love to see the you know the local. I um, mean, obviously Russia was transformed completely before yeah. uh, twenty eighteen, and the stadium you're looking at there, Sochi was a fantastic stadium, and everywhere a lot of money was spent. Now, there were one or two, maybe if I said to the word to you, uh, Ivan White Elephant. Does that mean anything where the stadium was built, but it kind of, after it was finished, the World Cup, it was not being used very much. Samurai was one I went to that, that England played a game there. No idea what it's being used for now, but it was it was built at, uh, built at great expense. But uh, now mm. I think it's sort of sitting there. And, uh, there's mm. maybe a club. I think they got yeah, relegated they, possibly, did they? No, no, no. The, the, there is a club, uh, Krylia Sovietov. They play in Premier League, so everything's fine. There okay. is only one stadium in Russia which is not uh, getting used right now. It's uh, uh, Mordovia in Saransk. Maybe you... Uh, uh, Saransk, yeah, maybe I got mixed up. Yeah, I, mean, I knew there yeah, was... Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it... every, stadium, every stadium in Russia uh, which was used for World Cup uh, 2018 is uh, is using right now, including Sochi, including Kazan, including Yekaterinburg, uh, Kaliningrad. So, yeah, every stadium in Russia... Mm which was built for the World Cup is is being used right now yeah yeah well that's that's, that's good to see obviously that the, 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 there are there are problems with the uh, the exclusion for, for Russia at the moment let me just tell you that quick story uh the, the, you see the two guys sitting in the middle there on the on the grass there in between in between you and me oh, yeah. um they were two a uh, local lads who I was working for a FIFA at the time and we were doing some filming at Sochi before the, yeah. the, the tournament started and these guys had um and this tells you a little bit about the situation in Russia, if you like. Um, th these kids were um, they, they were experts at drones. We were filming around um, the region uh, and they had this drone and uh, we were getting different views of the stadium. And we were told um, to not film anywhere outside the perimeters. These kids were very enthusiastic and they decided they were going to film the trajectory of a ball going in the net from you remember the cristiano ronaldo free kick oh, yeah. that went in, in at that very end fantastic goal mm -hmm. and they they, they filmed uh, the flight of the ball before it happened a bit weird but uh so their their drone went into the net and they got in a right tangle and mm -hmm. they, they got a little bit out of trouble as well and 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 you can see them trying to get the, the drone out of the net there and a few days later we were in um in volgograd where england played their opening game yeah. and uh un under strict rules and with a, a guide with them they would say do not film around the city and around there's, uh there's a massive statue as you probably know in um in volgograd ex stalingrad a, a, a war monument um, and these Mama, Mama of Kurgan, it calls Mama yeah. of Kurgan, incredible thing. I mean, it really is, and very until you've seen it. I mean, it's just so huge looking over the city and you know all the history that came from World War II. Uh, these yeah. lads were filming it then against orders. They, they they went on and filmed 
This is in my book, by the way. They went on film. They've sent their, their drone up around the, the, the statue head. And within minutes, it was knocked out of the sky. There you go. Uh, th that tells you all you need to know about security in Russia. Uh, uh, and the thing, the, 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 uh, the, the drone was literally in pieces. They were quite proud of themselves, but got us in a bit of trouble. But anyway, um, <laughs> so listen, Ivan, tell us, um, you are not in Russia. Now, yes. tell us as much as you want here. Uh, I mean, you, a lot of people, as we know, because of the, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, have, have left the country. Are, are you one of those? Yeah. Yes. My, why why did you feel you wanted to leave? Yeah, I left Russia for like business trip one day before the war. And um, here we are. Um, I, live in it I live in Italy for, more, for like uh, almost two years now since I've been in Italy. And uh, yeah, it's not safe for me and for other people to live in Russia because we have obviously some anti-war um, anti uh, thoughts and uh, we don't want this uh, situation to continue. Obviously, the war is... is is something that we always been scary because uh, obviously we are we, we are not the, the, the generation who survived during the second world war and stuff like this but we were we've been growing up growing up uh, listening to the stories from uh, world war to veterans uh, and so the uh, the most important thing that uh, they told us uh, this, this this situation shouldn't be happening again Unfortunately, it is what is happening again um, uh, 18 yeah. years ago. We don't want to get too much after. into the politics, but yeah, I yeah, appreciate no worries. Well, why yes. did you feel why did you feel you had to leave though? I mean, you, you said you left before the war started. Mm. Um, did you feel did you feel you might be drafted if you went back? Yes, of course. And uh, I had some uh, an anonymous uh, calls, which I obviously didn't like, and I wouldn't uh, like to tell you the context of these uh, calls. But uh, yeah, these calls were like, uh, you're not you're not welcome at your uh, home ho home country anymore because you have these views, you have these uh, propagandistic uh, anti-Russia views. Okay, whatever. Uh, the only view I have is that the war shouldn't be happening. Uh, on our soil and on the soil of our neighboring country. Right. So you made that public, did you, before, that, and, and people didn't like absolutely. what you said? A absolutely, yes. And uh, I can't... I, I, uh, it's normal for me. I, obviously, I have my family in Russia, and uh, I have a lot of friends in Russia who actually left Russia as well, but after. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I... I, I'm not trying, you know. <laughs> so no, yeah. so so you feel you can't go back right now? Then? No, absolutely not. So okay, we'll leave it there for now on that. I mean, so so you worked in football, um, yes. and now you're kind of looking for work within the game outside of well, Russia. And you're currently in Italy. Yeah, I can, I can say that I've been working in, in in Russian football for six years. Obviously, if you work uh, for that hard. For that uh, long uh, in inside football, uh, obviously I'm a journalist by education. I have this my my diploma in uh, in journalism in Moscow State University. But yeah, I've been working in Russian football for six years, and kind of and I, and I was kind of tired of this because it's twenty four per seven. Uh, it's always like this. You don't have weekends. You don't have holidays. So you always uh, you you see more stadiums than your your family, and so obviously yeah. Right now I'm looking at a challenge in. Yeah. Uh, in, in football, in the game, but I have some other projects uh, near football, near sports and near some other things, so yeah. like uh, social, social, so, so, social, political things anyway. So, yeah, it would be it would be great for me to return to football, maybe European, maybe, I don't know, uh, American or whatever. But uh, yeah, it's not it's not it's not it's not my 100 percent desire to do it right now because uh, I want to relax a bit, you know? Yeah. Let's just change the background. Um, All right. There you go. That means something to you, doesn't it? Because on that flag, I'll tell you exactly what that was. Um, mm. Or maybe you can tell me without even you, you having seen it before. Any any guesses as to what that is? Well, I think it's a fan zone in the Rostov on Don, where English yeah. fans are, were cheering on uh, on their team. But are, are they are they English or are they just? Yeah. Russian? Well, that's that's very interesting. I've made some good friends when I was out in Russia. I still have, and I'm still in contact. Um, the people you're looking at there, Russian, um, right. and they were Manchester United. You see the guy on the holding his arm out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a Manchester United tattoo on his arm. I think there. It's a badge of United of Manchester. <laughs> it is, yeah. Um, All right. So I, 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 um, I was sort of stationed down there, um, and I was we were hoping that England, as, as you remember, England um, 
they messed up the last group game against Belgium and they ended up playing in Moscow against Colombia, that famous game when they finally won yeah. a penalty shootout. But oh, had yes. they won their group, they would have ended up in Rostov against, mm. uh, it would have been against Japan, I think. Yeah, because uh, Japan eventually lost to Belgium. But anyway, so I was in, in Rostov at the time watching the England game against Panama. And that's when the day that film was shot, uh, that, that picture was taken. And I, I was really surprised how many of the locals were supporting England. You know, this was uh, it was a lunchtime game and these people and they all seem to support Manchester United. And I couldn't get my head around it. So there's that there's that guy and his girlfriend with. Uh, and if you if you if you're wondering and you're English, we're reading that that says that flag says Rostov on Don with the with the St. George cr- cross um the, the England flag so um for some reason because they followed Manchester United they they followed England as well um I've got a, 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 another one as well just to uh, back that up Hang well on. it's absolutely normal because I I also support uh, English team Stoke City and I support the uh, English national team uh, as well as Welsh national team Scottish uh, so all, uh, the, all countries of the United Kingdom oh yes. well there you go. There's another lad. He's, 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 uh, Trechikov, his name is. He lives in Taganrog, which is not far from Rostov. Oh, yeah. uh, another big Manchester United fan. I'm still in touch with him, and he's a, he's a huge football fan. And he was supporting England as well and supporting Manchester United. So, you know, it just kind of illustrates. I mean, what, since the war started, and, and when, I, before, when I went to Russia, I wanted to go to Russia because I, 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 I felt that nobody really understood what the place was like. But, and mm-hmm. it it was you had kind of had this view of Russia and the Soviet Union as a, as a, the Iron Curtain, and you you really had this vision of kind of grayness behind that curtain. But when you open up the curtains and when you go there, that really wasn't the case. Uh, and as I said in my book, it's one of my favorite World Cups without a doubt. It was people were very warm. Um, and you know you met people who you didn't think you were going to meet and 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 you know, the, the p- people like that who, who supported Man United because United played there in Rostov. Was it around the time that you were as the director of communications? No, there? no. In, the, Euro- in the Europa League, I think it was about, about 2017, 2016, something like that. Something I think they like drew that, at yeah. Old Trafford, didn't they? And United, I think, won uh, at Rostov. Um, um, but that was fascinating. And I, and I think, you know, maybe because of that, they, they, they got a lot of fans, but United, of course, famous oh, all yeah, over course. the world. Um, but it was so, so interesting. You can see the picture there of uh, as Harry Kane scoring. I think oh, it was, yeah. well, he scored a penalty that day, and we were, we were all watching and supporting supporting England. But it was it was a very strange thing. But but tell tell me about your your time at Rostov because they were a club that they, they had a brand new stadium built, didn't they, for the World Cup? What, yeah. what was it like? I mean, in the time before the exclusions, now. Um, was, was it run professionally? You're now, you're now living in the West. How did you find the, the 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 way the clubs were run and stuff? Uh, I can't say that uh, Rostov was running professionally very much. Um, yes, they have the they have they had a new stadium, but I mean, in the terms of senior management in the club, they were not like in twenty twenty one. They were like in two thousand and five uh, by any means. Uh, yeah, so huge loans. Huge problems with money, huge problems with uh, actually giving the salary to workers on time. But yeah, I mean, I enjoyed uh, my tenure there. It was, I think, three months or something like this. And Rostov is one of the most popular clubs in Russia. Uh, obviously, uh, everybody in the South supports uh, Rostov uh, as well as Krasnodar FC because uh, they have a great fan base and their stadium was uh, almost full before the COVID. Uh, like 35, at Rostov. Uh, thousand- Oh yes, in Rostov, thirty-five thousand or whatever uh, on every game. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter Spartak or I don't know Himki or whatever. So people in Rostov they were really fond of the club, and obviously the COVID. Obviously, right now what is happening in Ukraine because obviously Rostov regions borders all these things, and uh, fan ID uh, because we have this fan ID thing that without uh, so-called. You have fun idea during the World Cup. Everybody who uh, yeah, that's right. You had to yeah. and you could get free so train use and everything, and free oh, trains yeah. so, and everything. Yeah, so was, they so they so they prolonged this uh, this thing uh, on the games of Russian Premier League, and so mm. many fans they don't want to uh, to sign in for 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 this for this program because they don't want the state uh, or the government to control what what are they doing, what are they attending, 
and uh, yeah, stuff like this. So the attendance everywhere, including Rostov, uh, is dramatically uh, went down. Uh, COVID, war, uh, and fun ID. So right now, obviously, there are, well, 20,000, maybe maximum. Um, but uh, before the before all these things, before 2020, it yeah. was wonderful. Absolutely, it is. So, so you, because of the financial problems, you you lost that your your job there, and then you had to had to, had to leave. Is well, that like, right? I, I I can say that I I lost my job because the head coach was fired. Uh, there's a tradition in Russia if you if you're familiar with the head coach. Obviously, uh, the head coach of Rostov at the time was uh, one of the most famous uh, Russian managers, Yuri Semen. Uh, he was the manager of Lokomotiv uh, when, the t when, when I was at the Lokomotiv. And uh, when time came, when uh, he said that, yeah, I can't continue like this, uh, I was uh, forced to leave as well. And it was my, it, it was my final uh, appointment of a final, final position in, Ru in Russian football. Then in, uh, in, in five months, the war started and uh, I have a new yeah, life right now. Yeah, yeah. What, what was your time? So before that, you worked for the, the national team. What, oh, what yeah. were you doing there? For the Russian national yeah, during, team during the uh, Euro 2020, which was obviously scaled, uh, scheduled on uh, in in the summer of 2021 because of COVID. Yeah, I was running the uh, social networks, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and stuff like this. It was like a part-time job only during the uh, tournament. Uh, obviously, I had uh, I had uh, I had an offer after the Euro. Uh, to join them permanently but I said no it's not something that I'm interested in because uh, national team have how many games uh, per year six seven or something like this including friendlies and I would like to I would have liked to work regularly every week uh, like uh, match day so yeah and then the offer from Rostov came obviously I said yeah Rostov is uh, is a great club I offered a great position in uh, social uh, in senior management and yeah, I left Moscow for the first time and uh, moved to Rostov. But uh, here we are. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and before, and obviously before the. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, your English is great. I love the way you said you would have done. That's it. Your English is excellent. Um, so. The state of Russian football. Oh, by the way, that, that that picture change there. This 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 was another fascination for me that the Russian culture. I mean. You know, this is one of the tragedies, really, that people don't see from the West. Really, that that Russian culture is so fantastic. You know, the the the, the ballet and, and and the opera. During the World Cup, I went to um, I went to, the, to see Swan Lake uh, in Volgograd, in in you know, ex Stalingrad. Uh, and during the interval, everyone was dressed up. You know, everyone was dressed up. You go, to, you, you go, you go to see the opera and the ballet in in St. Petersburg or Moscow and the Bolshoi or whatever. Even in Volgograd, right down in the south there. And they all came out at half time. You can see them all the all the guys there dressed up in uh, their dinner jackets and everything, watching. I think that was a, one of the Russian games during the World Cup, and it was so interesting. It really was. Um, uh, but now, so the clubs, the national team is excluded. The clubs mm -hmm. are excluded, and there was a, a move from UEFA uh, and FIFA to reintegrate the under seventeen team. Uh, mm -hmm. So that you know the youngsters, you it know, younger than your generation coming in to, but that has been put on a hold because even though um, nobody, nobody, nobody would that, play, and there would be like yeah, uh, I mean that, that is it's still, that's still on the table, is my understanding. But the problem is there are at least a dozen countries who will not play Russia uh, at any level. England is one of them. Uh, Sweden is another. I know that. Um, what do you make of all, of all that? Yeah, obviously, right now, I don't see any sense in Russian football, unfortunately. I don't see any sense in Russian national team. I don't see any sense in Russian club football, because without Euro Cups, it's, uh, it doesn't make sense at all. Obviously, yeah, if you get a first uh, a first, uh, a first place, obviously, you you got rewarded with the, with the cup or whatever. But uh, you wouldn't compete in the Champions League. What's the point of football without competing with your neighbors, without uh, competing with the best, uh, actually, um, club competition in the world? Uh, we were lucky enough to participate uh, from uh, uh, 19, 1960s uh, till uh, uh, 2022. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's understandable for uh, many European uh, teams and uh, clubs, uh, countries, or whatever, that they wouldn't like to play with Russia because uh, it's understandable because they have mm. the position that the Russia is an aggressor and it is aggressor. And... Uh, 
uh, it could be a crime uh, for for its citizens who pay the price right now because obviously the the prices went up in Europe, but the gas prices went up and everything went up. And uh, to play with the aggressor, nobody would understand this. Yeah. Okay. For I know you're outside of Russia now, and you, you you've left the country for the for the time being, and you're in yeah. Italy. What what? I mean, I assume you're still in contact with with people from the football world in back in the country. How how are they finding it? Do you think that you know being excluded like that? I mean, I look at the uh, the, the the Premier League table, and you know the football still goes on. I know you've got the winter break coming up because of uh, yeah. it gets pretty cold in Russia. Um, I mean, yeah. Yeah, well, how are they? How I mean, the crowd's down. What, what, they're still playing, and then Krasnodar are top at the moment, aren't they? The, the place you're from, Krasnodar, and, and and then beyond that, it's St. Petersburg, Zenit, who have always been champions last five years, and mm. and CSK Moscow are um, uh, towards the top. But but Krasnodar are doing really well, aren't they? Well, good for them because uh, it uh, it's uh, their uh, owner, uh, Sergei Galitsky, I think he, is, uh, he doesn't feel well, I think, because he has some problems with his health. And obviously, if Krasnodar would win the, uh, would win the title, it would, uh, would give uh, Sergei so much boost in terms of health and stuff like this. Obviously, I think he has some problems with cancer or whatever. So uh, obviously, I, I wish him well. Uh, and he's he, actually, he's the only uh, man in Russia, in Russian football, who, who owns the club. So Krasnodar, Krasnodar is the only private club in Russia. Yeah. And they built uh, so, 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 so a magnificent Ooh. state. Yeah, who was who was? I remember, twenty years ago, Ruben Kazan suddenly hit the hit the headlines. Do you remember that, Ruben? I went to oh, Kazan yeah. when I was in, in Russia. Um, great town. I mean, uh, city, um, a bit further west. Um, they, they sort of had a benefactor, didn't they? That came in and they sort of made a mark for a while, and they won the. I league, think they? they got promoted in two thousand and four, and four years after they won the the title. But uh, they had yeah. a magnificent coach, Kurban Berdeev. Uh, he's one of the best. Uh, uh, well, he's not Russian, obviously, he's a uh, Turkmen uh, national, but uh, uh, in Russia, everybody loves Kurban Berdiev, and it's especially in FC Rostov, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, so as far as you can see, I mean, it, 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 they're still they're getting on with it, obviously, they're struggling yeah. a bit financially, but yeah. the, the, the league continues, and, fa and fans still go, do they? I mean, it's, it's remains yes, as, as well? Yeah, they still go, but uh, because of uh, fan ID, uh, the thing that uh, I, I told you about, yeah. uh, so many fans are boycotting their own teams uh, they they wouldn't like to go there right it's the same situation in norway right now because in norway there is uh, uh, obviously vr yeah uh, video refereeing uh, assistance or whatever yeah 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 okay yeah, VR, VR. yeah well it's, it's and, uh, uh, very typical of, in english <laughs> oh yes uh, absolutely especially right now and uh, lots of uh, norwegian uh, uh, fans are boycotting their teams because they don't want to go uh, to the games with vr the same with uh, the same with Russian with Russian fans because they don't want to sign up for this fan ID. Uh, they say like this: "Stadium is our home. Why do we need a passport to go to our home?" It makes sense, absolutely. And as for my colleagues who are left in Russia, obviously I have a great contact with them and stuff like this. I can't say that they are fully satisfied, obviously, with the situation without Euro Cups, without everything. Uh, but maybe they don't have a, an any other choice they work uh, they they get a good money they work in uh, their favorite profession and fingers crossed uh, that everything will will end soon obviously yeah. and as far as uh, overseas players i mean are they they remain uh, a few a few some, some left, left, didn't they? Uh, some, some some left. And some, I remember... some left uh, from Balkans. Uh, some players from Balkans are left. Uh, as, mm. as, as, as still in Russia. Uh, some players from Africa. I think they're also in in Russia. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there is a, there is a good thing uh, for, for about uh, Jude Bell Bellingham. Yeah, he's uh, first, we love Jude, uh, especially Birmingham fans. <laughs> absolutely, yes. Like so me. Pep, 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 uh, Cloet. Uh, he was the manager of Birmingham. Yeah. Who, sorry? Pep, uh, I, I Pep forgot. Clotet. Pep, Pep Clotet. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. And recently he was the manager of FC Torpedo in the Russian first division. Okay. So I wasn't aware of that. Okay. Oh, yeah. yes. So, so, so he was fired because uh, Torpedo went to uh, like a winless strike or whatever. But yeah, uh, still Russian. Was that, after uh, still... The war, was that after the war started? Yes. 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 After okay. the war, he signed up for, for Torpedo and uh, it, was, it was okay. He's a Spanish national, I believe. Uh, still in Russian football, there are uh, foreign managers foreign players 
but in terms of uh, toxic uh, toxic uh, environments uh, in their motherlands in their uh, in their home countries yes it is but obviously uh, russia offers a great amount of money still absolutely so they're still, so they're still is able like, to pay a, a good wage. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, people are leaving. Well, or... not 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 as good uh, as as good wages as in Saudi Arabia, but obviously. But if you compare, oh. I don't know, Slovakia to Russia in terms of salary, obviously yeah. in Russia they would they would pay you more. Yeah. Yeah, I have a friend who's a, a sports promoter. He is like you. He's left the country. He's in he's in um, in Georgia now in Tbilisi. He was a, 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 a he worked with a lot of basketball players in in the Moscow area, mm -hmm. and a lot of them have left now. So, well, a few remain, but. Um, and he does a bit of football as well and music as a music promoter but you know the situation has changed clearly and um, he, he's not in the country right now either um so, so interesting to talk to you ivan um stoke city you're a stoke city fan please explain how somebody from krasnodar um ended up supporting stoke in england <laughs> tony pulis Rory the lab peter crouch uh, the roar of the Britannia. So you know, it was it was amazing. It was the truly uh, English, British, whatever you call it, uh, atmosphere. Truly uh, English football. And so, yeah, when, when at the time when I supported Stoke, it was, I was I was twelve or something like this. So I didn't have uh, very much clue of football. What is the football like actually? Obviously, at the time when I supported Stoke, there was Barcelona with the with Tiki Taka and stuff like this. But uh, yeah, Stoke was my first love, and I still support them, uh, even though they're in championship right now. But I really hope that in coming years I would be able to come to Stoke on Trent and to watch uh, my favorite Stoke in the Premier League. Yeah, do you know who their rivals are? Uh, Port Vale. Port Vale, uh, very good. Port yeah, Va Port Vale, yeah. and obviously we. Well, actually, when Stoke was in the Premier League, there were no direct rivals. So uh, we had rivals with Arsenal, obviously. Uh, because Arsene, Arsene Wenger didn't uh, didn't, didn't like it. the direct style. Didn't, That's didn't right. Like yeah. We were uh, uh, rivals with Birmingham and Aston Villa, obviously because of the Midlands. Eh? Yeah. Uh, Wolverhampton, I think, and Wolves, yeah. yeah, maybe Cardiff yeah. or Swansea. Yeah, or but but, but so, what, yeah. the, the, the curiosity here is what somebody so far away. I mean, Stoke, yeah. uh, 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 far from a glamorous club. Well, how did somebody from your part of the world end up supporting them? What, what, yeah, what yeah, I you? just, you know, I just switched, uh, switched channels and got the oh, the game uh, Stoke versus Liverpool. Obviously, everybody knows about Liverpool, uh, especially four years before they won the Champions League. And yeah, I just got amazed uh, of the atmosphere at the Britannia, how they play, how they sort of throw away and stuff like this. Then they obviously they got to the FA Cup final. They lost to Man, Man City, but they got to Europe. They played with Dynamo Kiev. Uh, they played with Besiktas. So, you know, and then Mark Hughes came. Uh, three, nine, uh, nine places finishes. Boyan Krkic, Marko Anatovic. Uh, so... It was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great to see. And you know, the, the 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 footprint of, of of English club football does extend all around the world. Absolutely, and, yes. You know, um... and and you know, uh, uh, my, my last remark about this. Uh, obviously, Russian, English, British, whatever uh, relationship, uh, they were always bad. Obviously, since the uh, 16th century, we were not enemies, but uh, the tensions or whatever like yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but everybody in Russia, when there is an English national team are playing, they know it's a good quality football. So a lot of Russians who support uh, British, not yeah, only I, 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 as 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 Rangers. As we... Yeah, they follow uh, English national team because uh, it's the you are the founders of football, and we are always grateful for this beautiful game that you invented. Invented actually. Yeah, there was also uh, the the hooligan thing, which, uh, oh, yeah. which which bubbled over, uh, burst yeah. over during 2016 in in Marseille. Uh, but that, that that there's a kind of kinship as well there isn't a lot of the Russians. Uh, yes, my yes. understanding yes. kind of yes. looked yes. up to the the English scene. From the seventies and eighties and nineties. If, 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 if you um, speak with Russian but, ultras, if you speak with Russian ultras, obviously they would they would say that uh, they hate English, uh, every, everything connected with England. But uh, as for normal people who sit on their benches on their stadiums, English is the mark of uh, mark of quality. Can yeah, I say this? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating. Uh, you know, and a lot of people say, you know, keep keep football out of politics, and you, and FIFA try as best they can to do that, but it. Mm -hmm. It's it's not as simple. Um, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. what is happening right now is not it's not a politics. Right now, people are dying. It's not a politics. So, uh, obviously, I, I have a great sense of uh, understanding uh, of these football sanctions. Obviously, football should be above everything. But when people are dying, and uh, no.
first you have to set on your priorities you have to stop the war then you go to the negotiation table to say how we can come back uh, russian football market because russian football market is a huge one yeah, yeah. yeah. how you how you reintegrate russian football, football market uh, into uefa again do you think you'll ever go back to russia not this year not next year and maybe not until uh, 2030 i'm afraid Mm. It's a long process. Strong it's, principle. It's, long process. it's a great it's a tragedy. Process. Mm. It's a long process. It was the same with Germany, uh, obviously, after the World War II. And uh, maybe in, I don't know, eight, uh, ten years' time, Russian football will come back to UEFA. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and just finally, um, you, you, you're Italy now. So if you're, uh, you have a message for anybody in the game, you'd, you'd like to, to, would you come to England? Yeah. And, and uh, see if you could get a, a job within a, a club here. Yeah, it would be great. Uh, obviously, I need a working visa for that. And yeah. uh, uh, what, what for... do you offer? Just quickly, what 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 can you do? Social media, public relations. Uh, obviously, I ran a lot of things in Spartak, including the world famous Twitter. When we roasted every everybody and everything from Donald Trump to whatever uh, yeah. uh, Spartak TikTok. So yeah, I mean, uh, I get along with fans. I know what fans would like to see from the club. Uh, in terms of public relations, in terms of social media, obviously I speak English. Uh, I think it's quite good. So yeah, I mean, I can offer everything, uh, both on a voluntary basis online from Italy and both on site. Just uh, sponsor my visa because uh, obviously without uh, without it, I, I wouldn't be able to work in the UK. Yeah, well, listen, it's great to speak to you, Ivan. Ivan Korsh from uh, Trasladar region, but now living in Italy. Uh, lovely to speak to you. Wish you all the very best. And uh, listen, if you do come over, um, I'll take you to a Birmingham City game. You'll enjoy that. Um, the home of Jude be Bellingham. <laughs> Send uh, Andrews. Saint maybe Andrews. when we when you when you play Stoke, well, that's when we play Stoke. That would, might be quite cool, actually. Um, oh, yeah, it would be great. Yeah, Thank yeah. You, listen, th thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, not a blue Zoom, but a news Zoom today. Uh, Ivan Korsh from uh, from Russia, now in Italy, uh, with his views on the situation, the tragedy, really, uh, uh, Russia, Ukraine. But uh, football does trump everything. Uh, I'm sure UEFA and FIFA would say, let's you know try and, but you know the sanctions remain until the war uh, dies down. Then uh, I think maybe Russians, uh, Russia's exclusion, will continue. Thanks, Ivan. Great to speak to you. Thanks a lot. Ciao. Take care.